Hey everyone and welcome back to Just Finish Coding. I'm Sriram and this video is part 6 of making the Chrome Dino game on scratch. Here, we will set up the animations of the star and the bird and also complete our end screen by allowing the player to respawn. As always, if you haven't watched parts 1 to 5, then click on the card up here. Without further ado, let's get right into the code. First, go to the backgrounds sprite. In addition to the player being able to respawn on clicking the play again button, we also want this feature to work when the player clicks on some part of the screen. This is what we'll be coding here. At the end of the else condition after hiding, also broadcast a new message called set brightness and wait. This will not help during the end screen itself, but it will be extremely important for the next video. Anyhow, after this, check if the sprite has been clicked. If yes, then check if during that time, the can click variable was set to yes. Here, we will have to restart the game. So first broadcast init and wait, then broadcast start game and wait again. That's pretty much it if we really want to restart the game. It's super simple because of the way that we have set up all of the messaging scripts. Let's now ensure that the same thing happens when we click the play again button. Once again, check if the sprite is clicked. If yes, then we will sort the other scripts in this sprite. Last but not the least, broadcast the two messages and wait. In it and start game. Great, that should be everything needed for the proper end screen working. Test the program out and intentionally die at the start. Click anywhere and wow, it completely works. It's really awesome to see the high score update as well. Now that the end screen is ready, it's time to move on to the scenery sprite to program the star animation. We will need a variable for this called star animate counter and we will set this to zero at the beginning. After this, create a custom block called animate if star. This function will be responsible for the blinking motion as the star moves across. Use this block after changing the X position. At the end of the tick message, increment the animation counter as well. Alright, it's time to define the block. Move over to the right where you have ample space to work with. This condition will be very similar to the scenery spawning and we will just modify a couple of things. The variable name to star animate counter the constant for normalizing to minus 40, and now the costume change. The costumes of the star are two and three, and what we want to do is to switch the costume to whatever the costume is not. So if the costume is two, then we will switch the costume to three, and if the costume is three, then we will switch the costume to two. Finally, at the end, set the animate counter to be zero. Fantastic, and that will be it for the block definition. Scroll back to the left because we need to make some changes during the clone creation process. When a clone is created, set the animate counter to zero. Okay, for the moment, we just switch to one costume. So let's add some detail there. Make a new variable called mode for all sprites. The purpose of this variable is simple. It will detect whether it's day or night. A value of zero will correspond to the day, while a value of one will correspond to the night. In this condition, we will check if the mode is the daytime. If yes, then we can keep the costume to be the cloud. But if not, we will also want some of the scenery spawn to be the stars. We'll give a 70% chance of remaining as a cloud and a 30% chance of becoming a star. Nice, that's all for deciding the costumes of each obstacle. Go back to the dino sprite. During the init message, ensure that the mode is set to zero. This should make sense, after all, we want the start to be during the day. Okay, let's do something very similar for the obstacles where we want to create an animation for the bird. We will need a variable for this called bird animate counter. Good, just like we animated the star, create a custom block called animate if bird. Move this to the side and use it after changing the X position. Increment the counter at the end and now let's actually start to define the block. With some very minor changes, it's going to be the same as the block we used to animate the stars. So go into the scenery sprite where you have the code and drag and drop it into the obstacles. Go back to the obstacle sprite and then place the same receive blocks under the animate if bird function. Like I mentioned before, you do need to change a few small things. The variables for starters that refer to the bird. 
Also, we'll be switching between costumes 5 and 6, not 1 and 2, so we'll need to make all those changes as well. The last variable name needs to be changed too. Wonderful, that's the block itself. Let's ensure that the birds are actually created during spawning. At the start, set bird animate counter to 0. We won't allow the birds to spawn at first and keep a score threshold of something like 250. Basically, once this threshold is crossed, the birds will display as well. If this is not the case, then we can just do the same thing as before. But if the score is above 250, then we will give the occasional chance of switching to the fifth costume. Alright, next check if the costume name is 5. This refers to the bird. We'll vary the height by a random function as well. We'll give the bird a 50% chance of being at a Y position of 14, which is really close to the player, and a 50% chance of being at 25, which is a little bit above the dino's head. Well, that is pretty much it. Test out the code and after a while, you should have the birds moving towards you. We don't have the stars yet because we haven't programmed the modes, but we'll get there soon. With that said, thanks for watching. Make sure you leave a like if this helped you out. And until next time, peace out.